Namaste, I, fe I feel. Instinctively drawn to tease your mind. I want to play with your mind, you see. I want to piss your mind off slightly. So if you can just bear for a few seconds. If you bear for one minute. I'm going to test you. I'm going to test your mind. If you're listening with mine, I'm going to test it. One minute, okay? And this one minute will reveal the greatest clue. The greatest clue to you experiencing God. To you experiencing Buddha. And to you experiencing Christ. And to you experiencing Shiva. And to you experiencing Muhammad, Ramana, Papaji, Neem Karoli, Ananda Mayama. You're going to experience what they experienced in one minute. And this is it. In any, any moment of your life, even during dream at sleep, anything that comes that you seek, anything that comes with not seeking, anything that you give awareness to, anything that comes from existing minds, anything that comes while you're meditating, while you're asking questions, who am I? Anything that comes, if the thing that comes has an opposite, it's not that. Anything that comes has an opposite, it's not that. One minute. Do you, do you want to take this further? Do you want to look together? You ask a question. Who am I? Question comes, your love. Love has an opposite. Hate. Who am I? Bliss. Bliss has an opposite. I don't know what it is, but it's non bliss. Who am I? Emptiness. Opposite? Yeah. Fullness. Who am I? Nothing. Opposite? Something. Do you believe in God? Yes. Devil. Are you a man or a woman? I'm a man. Woman, are you religious? Yeah, non religious, atheist, whatever you want to call it. How far do you want me to go every time you speak? Everything that we have. Ex ex if created, we have created two. We have created pain, we have created pleasure. We have created this, we have created that. We have created man, we have created woman.
We have created universe, we have created non-universe. If there is not an exact opposite of the dictionary method, and we say this word, there is a non to it, or a yes to it, a no or a yes, yes and no. Are you God? Yes. Not true. No. Everything that comes, every single thing that comes, and it has an opposite, it is not that. So what the fuck? You see mind? Mind is now exhausted. Oh, I'm exhausted. Buddha nature. Buddha nature. Not Buddha, man, under tree. Buddha nature is the essence of not this and not that. Ego is that name, form, identity. Very normal, very natural. You know, some gurus will say, you know, you should get rid of your name. No, no. Our world, this one, has a body, a name, a form, a mind, lives in the world, walks along the trees, everything. Normal, you yeah? know, very normal. External world. So are you a form in an external world? No. Because we have the invisible form, the subtle body, in an internal world. But of course, unless you experience it, you don't know. So you are 100% convinced that you are this form because there's no opposite. There is no opposite for you, the one who thinks that you exist as this body, in this world, in this form, in this outer world. There is no opposite of inner world. Yet you still look. Yet you still seek for something that is non-phenomenal, non-perceivable, non-recognizable, non-understandable. But something inside says, there is something else. I have a purpose. I am here for a reason. There has to be something because it's not simply about what UG Krishnamurti says we just live and die. Every single being, even UG, experienced this. He denied it, you see, but you're not denying it. So if you feel this, there's something, is this something? The external world. You look, so you seek. I'm going to seek. You know, heaven, God, everything, religion, but everything external. Book, everything is outward. You see, everything is outward. Body, outward, everything. Where, where, where can I look for this? In this only world, this, this singular world that I believe in, I have to look within this singular world because it does not have an opposite. I have not found the opposite. You see? Very good clue to awakening. And the second clue is, you need to find the opposite to dismiss both. Okay? When you found happiness, you could not understand happiness until you found sadness. And when you found sadness and happiness, you realized that it was not a permanent state. You are not permanently happy, even though you have experienced sadness. You will, at some point in your life, experience sadness. Both of these states are opposites, and you are the experiencer of both of these states. So you accept this, you see. I accept happiness, and I accept sadness. When someone dies at the funeral, it, and you, you go to the funeral, and you cry, it's fine. It's okay. It's sad, but it's okay. You see, you accept happiness, and you accept sadness. Most, in fact, everyone ex accepts pleasure, sex. And they accept pain. Everyone experiences pain. It is something we overcome and it goes and it passes. So we have experienced these two opposites. And we accept them. We accept these two opposites. But we cannot accept the, 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 the opposite that keeps us attached to coming back in a body to find the purpose 
of something other than the external world. You know, it's, it's, it's like playing tennis. You keep coming here and then back. Here, back. Here, back. You have found one world. That is what you believe in. You believe in this external body and this external world. This one also believed in this external world, but something inside it is something else. And we assume that it is somewhere in the external world. This something else is in the external world. This is God pushing you to the ultimate opposite. Yeah? You have to experience it, both opposites, to accept them and realize that they will come and they will go. So when this external world is accepted as a single thing, you assume that this is all there is. And that everything that is in this world that you perceive, a person dying and being put in a box in a coffin, is death. Until you experience the opposite of external world, which the ego mind has named organs. Internal world must be inside the body, you know. Everything is outside the body. Mountains, ocean, sky, everything outside the body. Internal world is organs, nerves, blood, atoms, molecules, bones, structure, everything. I have discovered the internal world. Internal world? No, no. Internal body. You see? Internal body. Now your mind is really feeling, you know, queasy. I would say that most have switched off by now. Most minds that are... I am frightened have switched off. But those who stay... Here it is, you see. You establish the outer world, which you already have. And you establish the inner world, which you may, depending on how brave you are. Depending on your box of tricks, whether you want to pull out this trick of enlightenment or awakening, or you want to leave it tucked up. Because your life, you see, you are the box of tricks. Life pulls it out, but you are life, you see. Every time I speak, I contradict, but it's not a contradiction. It's the same thing. You experience not the internal body, but the internal world. You have overcame the opposite. And you will see many things that are unrecognizable. You will hear many things that are unrecognizable because you have never been in the internal world. And most of the external world that are appearing in front of you in your lifetime have not experienced the internal world. So you're going to sound like a fool when you say, my God, my God. <laughs> I don't know what to say, you see, because it was empty. It was paradise. It was peace. It was tranquility. It was silence. Of the, it was not like the silence that we experience in this external. It was, wow. I, I, whoa. And you want to stay in your internal world. Yeah? Same way as you experience happiness. And you want to stay there forever and ever and ever. But you cannot stay because you are pushed to sadness. And some people want to stay in sadness. They experience sadness. I like this. I love it. Every day I cry. It's so wonderful. It's so exciting. You know, wow, I don't want to be happy. I want to be, oh my God, this sadness is so... Yeah. We speak about it in mental health. They want some peop Most people want to find peace and happiness. And some want to find anger. 
and they cannot get out of this anger because they are so in comfort with this anger. So this internal world is the opposite of the external world and it is bliss and you want to stay there and you will stay there for as long and as many bodies that you have stayed in this external world you are entitled to stay there and you can stay in harmony and bliss and experience this but something will say no no it's the same you've experienced both opposites like happiness and sadness you've experienced external and internal and it's time to come out the coming out is the witnessing of the opposite you have now experienced external which you can describe to your family and your friends and you have experienced internal which you cannot describe because family and friends are not there and did not understand what you do not understand what you are speaking about because they have not experienced it you cannot ex ex describe um, pain to someone who has never experienced pain what is this pain like? Oh, it's horrible. No? You cannot describe something without experiencing it. Without the other experiencing it. And their experiences will be similar, but different. So it's the coming out of internal and external that is Buddha nature. I have experienced both opposites. And you know, when someone says, oh, it must have been wonderful when you spoke to God, when you met Jesus, when the essence of Rumi's love came, it must have been wonderful. Yes, but it's not that. What do you mean it's not that? It has to be better than this external world. No, yeah. No, no comparison. You see? If it has an opposite, it's not that. Same as the first minute of this words. If it has an opposite, it's not that. So Jesus is not that. The experience of being Buddha nature is not that. The external world is not that. The silence in the external world is not that. The silence in the internal world is not that. The clue to awakening is wait until nothing comes. But not nothing in our opposite world of something nothing. This wordless thing that you cannot place into external or intel internal or happiness or sad or pain or pleasure or emptiness or fullness when this moment comes and this is infinite moment this is your true state your true self when this moment comes it is wordless it is neither this nor is it that this is full enlightenment no you will not hear these words being said you may read about them in a buddha magazine or in Christ consciousness or in Shiva but not in the same way that this one is speaking whatever comes if it has an opposite it's not that and when all opposites go what remains is truth and who can be here to describe truth because if you say I describe truth, I witness truth, it is an opposite. It, you have pure I and you have ego I. So you have to go beyond I. And if you say, well, you know, I got this message, everything is consciousness. Consciousness has an opposite, non consciousness. And when you say, I saw God, God, devil, the universe spoke, 
Universe, non-universe. Form, formlessness. This is beyond every single experience, everything, opposite everything. You see? You cannot speak about what you are. You cannot describe what you are. But the one who sees the two opposites, the essence of what is left, an essence again is a world that takes you on essence and non-essence, but what remains and even remains takes you and remains and non-remains. The silence and even silence and non-silence and outward silence and inward silence, you see. So whenever you speak externally, you are saying external world is okay and internal world is not okay. Opposite. But the knowing, and this is very important. Not many will watch this video, but this is very important. The knowing that remains. Ignore the words. Sense. See? Nothing comes. No external, no internal. Complete flat line. Not boredom and not fun. Can you hear it? <laughs> 